Hi, and welcome back. Uh, I thought today we would do the uh, book review of The Whisper Man by Alex North. Uh, my, the book club that I am in with my sisters, we uh, just finished this not that long ago. And so I thought I would go over some of the things that we discussed um, in our book club and some of my personal thoughts that I had um, on, on this book. Um, I would like to begin with that I am by no means uh, a professional book reviewer in any sort of um, manner. I enjoy reading and I really have begun to enjoy discussing the books that I read. Um, a lot of times I stick within uh, the one genre that I really love, which is the sci-fi fantasy uh, genre. And so it's been nice to be part of um, a couple book clubs, actually, and really branching out on the types of books that I would normally uh, read. So I thought I would just start off by reading the jacket cover because that is, between that and the cover, that's what really drew me in to this book. So, after the sudden death of his wife, Tom Kennedy believes a fresh start will help him and his young son Jake heal. A new beginning, a new house, a new town, Featherbank. But the town has a dark past. 20 years ago, a serial killer abducted and murdered five residents. Until Frank Carter was caught, he was nicknamed the Whisper Man. He would lure his victims out by whispering at their windows at night. Just as Tom and Jake settle into their new home, a young boy vanishes. His disappearance bears an unnerving resemblance to Frank Carter's crimes, reigniting old rumors that he prayed with an accomplice. Now detectives Amanda Beck and Pete Willis must find the boy before it's too late, even if that means Pete has to revisit his great foe in prison, the Whisper Man. And then Jake begins acting strangely. He hears a whispering at his window. And so that is what drew me into this book to begin with. Um, that jacket cover kind of has everything. It's got, uh, murder mystery, <laughs> you know, serial killers. So it's basically like uh, everything, right? Um, also, uh, just a quick warning. Um, I don't believe my notes have any, any spoilers, but just in case, if you haven't read this book, um, this is, this may not be a spoiler free, uh, review. Just an FYI. To start, um, I thought the writing perspective was um, pretty interesting. It was done with um, the the father, Tom, being written in a first person perspective. And then the characters, Jake, Detective Amanda Beck, Detective uh, Peter Willis, or Pete Willis, and um, from the, the killer's point of view, and those were all done in a third person perspective. I, and some, some of the girls in the club did have, um, and they just didn't enjoy the, the switching from perspective to perspective. Uh, I, I personally don't have an issue with with that. Um, for example, when I was in high school, uh, one of the only books that I actually read um, after the first death uh, was written between multiple different perspectives. Um, and I, I really enjoyed that book. Um, however, the perspective switches in this book felt a little jagged at times. They, it didn't feel like clean transitions among the characters. So that was a little, that was a little off-putting. And then also the book is broken down into six separate parts. And the way that those parts are split up 
didn't fully make a lot of sense. So it left a lot of us in the book club not fully understanding why the parts were split where they were. I also personally had a bit of an issue with um, just the timeline. Uh, I, I'm still not entirely sure of the timeline from um, the beginning of the book when the first boy goes missing until the end of the book. I'm not, I still don't have that. Um, I still don't quite comprehend the time spacing between um, all of those events that happened. Another topic that was discussed was that so it was about a 50-50 split um, amongst our Zoom call. Of Some of the girls took issue with um, Jake's perspective. Um, they felt that his perspective was uh, written a bit too adult. Uh, I personally did not have issue with that. Um, but then again, I've read Ender's Game, and I'm planning on I'm planning on reading um, A Wrinkle in Time, and both those books have um, children around the same age as Jake. All those characters are written in a much more adult um, perspective. So, and also I've just personally met some kids that just are kind of old souls. <laughs> So I personally just did not have uh, a problem with that perspective. Um, I think the one thing that I did have a major problem with is that a lot of the characters felt underdeveloped. I mean, for example, one, uh, I, I mean, you could say that about a lot of the characters in the book, but one of the characters whose point of view is being written is Detective uh, Amanda Peck and I just, I felt no connection to that character at all. And then there was Karen who Tom met uh, the first day he drops off uh, Jake at his new school and so she is one of the other parents around and the only one to go up and introduce herself to him. And they have a budding friendship and then a seemingly interest, a date interest. But it just, you know, it turns out she's a reporter and that's it. There was not much else to her. Um, I think she was kind of thrown in there for to add, add a little bit more suspense. Like... Is she going to tell uh, everybody about Tom's secrets? Is she going to tell everybody about this or that? And then when it came down to it, it was like, no. <laughs> she felt kind of useless. It was just really just upsetting. And then the other character that I felt was on a, a little underdeveloped, underexplored, should have had a much better redemption story, in my opinion, is Detective Pete Willis. Uh, I really enjoyed his character. I felt he was starting to grow throughout, but it just, and then it just stopped. I feel what happened to his character was a travesty. I did not think it added anything to the plotline. I think... Uh, I feel he could have explored more in depth into the relationship between Tom and Pete. I feel like that was a missed opportunity, but I also feel like Tom's character was lacking and honestly was a bit obnoxious at times. Um, for example, the fact that he didn't seem to know anything about his wife, like too much about his wife's childhood is a little, is a little odd to me. One thing I thought was really cool was that the house that they moved into um, 
in their new town was treated very much like a character. It was just, it was really neat the descriptions that they used to um, describe just the odd angles, the odd window shapes, it just, how it just felt wrong to people. However, there wasn't too much into why it felt wrong to people. There was at least one subplot within the main plot of this uh, book. However, I don't feel that that was delved into um, at all. It was kind of it was kind of mentioned just so it could tie up loose ends and I know it was there to further the main plot. But it just felt thrown in. Like, it wasn't thought out. It wasn't explored in any sort of capacity. It was like, hey, there's the boy on the floor. There's a bunch of people who come to visit the boy on the floor. But, that's it. While I feel it was necessary to further the main plot, I felt it was not done in a very, um, I'm trying to be tactful. I don't feel it was done very well. It wasn't explored, is how I felt. So that was all the character, um, uh, points. Uh, but then there was also the main point of there was just this hint and glint of potential supernatural elements in the story and and none of that was and none of that was explored um i mean there was even the, the talk of tom potentially astro projecting when he was a kid and it was literally mentioned like once and never never explored from there and then there was the little girl that Jake kept seeing and the boy on the floor and it was like was it a ghost and then it was like was it his imagination um it's just as someone who wouldn't have minded if it was um there were more supernatural elements and it was explored a little bit more um I was a little bothered by just having it all there but seemingly dismissed and not being pursued any further so um that bothered me and then there was the pacing of the actual book the first half of the book felt felt kind of slow but I actually didn't mind that pacing, but then the last few parts felt rushed, super rushed. To me, it almost felt as though the author was given like 350 maximum pages for this book and he wasn't allowed to go over that. Um, honestly, I felt this book could have could have done with another couple hundred pages and just not felt so rushed at the end just the ending it just it felt so rushed and everyone agreed that it was slightly anticlimactic which was kind of a bummer so a few of the highlights that the book club and I did enjoy we, we enjoyed the house and the description of it though it could have used more uh, we enjoyed the we enjoyed the butterflies and the symbolism that we took from the butterflies, which was I believe there were five or six butterflies, which we felt symbolized the um, the previous uh, boys who had all passed. So it was a little anticlimactic once again when we found out what exactly the butterflies were. Uh, we all uh, had the impression that they were going to be much more of a sim symbolic thing, a supernatural thing. 
that um, the butterflies weren't necessarily real, but since um, Jake drew them and Tom was able to see them, we felt as though we, we thought it was a bit more of a spiritual, symbolic thing. Um, it was not. So, that was a little lackluster uh, when, when, when we figured that out. Um, so, I guess we're really at my final thoughts. I came into this video thinking that I was going to give this book like three, three and a half stars. I think it's probably more... Maybe two and a half, maybe three stars. While I'm not mad that I read it, you know, it was a super quick, super easy read. Um, for someone who's really just really trying to get back into um, strong reading, um, it was quick and easy. Oh, the book club doesn't know it, but I finished it like two weeks early. <laughs> While it was quick paced, um, I couldn't stop reading because I needed to see how it ended. So you know, that is a bonus. Um, I just, it, I think it was everything that followed after we found out what happened with Jake and who it was that took Jake. It was very anticlimactic and some of it to me was completely unnecessary. I still am very bitter about Detective Pete Willis's, uh, story arc. Um, I felt his redemption story arc uh, could have been so much better. I still feel as though Detective Amanda Beck was not explored in any sort of manner and I still have no idea who or what she is as a character. Um, as for uh, Tom and Jake, Tom is not my favorite character. I did not really enjoy his character. I thought he was kind of douchey. Um, uh, Jake was a really cool kid. The final scene in the book was just, just very odd and just unnecessary. And I did not enjoy it. I did not enjoy the very ending of the book. Like, I believe that was the very ending. Either way, the end of the killer of the killer's arc was just I did not I did not enjoy it. I think probably a two point five, maybe a three, maybe a three star rating would be appropriate. Cause while there were a few things that I did enjoy now um but now that I've made this video and have really put my heart into thinking and analyzing everything and going through the things that I read I I don't feel anything more than a three would be appropriate and I think that is honestly pushing it yeah so like I said while I'm not mad that I read it I'm not upset that I read it I don't necessarily feel it was a waste that I read it um I don't think I would recommend it I just don't think I would I guess that's really just the end of uh, the end of this video. Um, so yeah, so please just you know let me know down below if you read it, if you liked it, if not, why, or if you did, why. Um, I love discussion. You know, go ahead and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And yeah, I guess that's really about it. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope to keep this up and keep this going, and uh, I'll see you all later. Bye!